What? We have a minute left. All right, mother. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> da, 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 da. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Sounds sounds like I'm a space shuttle. Countdown. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good morning, everyone. I'm the Reverend Dr. Lewis Gates, and I'm going to be doing your Lyceum today. Uh, today, I'm going to speak about healing, uh, working on healing and working with the healing modalities today. Uh, I want to tell you what really spiritual healing is. Uh, a lot of people come back to the church and they under try to get hands on healing. They don't really quite understand what we're actually doing back there. So today I'm going to try to bring that more into focus of what we actually do. A spiritual healer is one who either through their own inherent powers or through mediumship is able to input vital creative forces to conditions within the body. Spiritual healers are aware that once, that once stress is removed from the mind and emotions, the body will respond naturally. So as we are channels from the guides, uh, master teacher or people on the other side, we allow the energy to move through us into you. We are the conduit of providing the healing. When we say the healing prayer, I ask the great unseen healing force what do we really feel that the unseen healing force is? Do you feel like it's God? Do you feel like it's guides, healing guides or angels? What do you believe that that healing force is to you? That's where your mind will take you. Your mind will take you to wherever you perceive that healing force to be. Whether it's higher God, angels, guides, healing guides, it doesn't matter. You can cover yourself in the purple flame, the great I am. It's wherever you feel like that is where I believe the healing is coming from. And that is where your focus will be. Remove all the obstruction from our mind and body, but we have to allow ourselves to remove the, the obstructions from our mind and body. We have to allow ourselves to remove those. The healer cannot just give you healing and send healing to you and you still have all this stuff going on in your vibration. You have to allow yourself to be able to clear the vibration from your being. So when you say that, remove all obstructions from my mind and body, what are you focusing on when you do that? What are you focusing on in your body that you say, I need to remove that. I need to have that gone. A healer doesn't really actually focus themselves on what is going on with you. I'm not going to wait for you to walk back to my chair or stool back there and you're walking with a limp and all I'm going to concentrate on is that limp. Must be something wrong. Maybe you just put on the wrong size shoes this morning and you're just having trouble walking. 
I, for me to focus on that intention, I need to focus on the whole body, the whole vibration. So whatever's going on with you might be something going on in your upper back that's causing something in your feet to bother you. So if I focus on one part, I'm missing the whole picture of what I need to send healing to. So I allow myself to be the channel, the open channel to send you energy to allow you as an individual to use the energy to where you feel you personally need it. And restore me to perfect health. What do you believe perfect health is for you? What do you believe that is? When you were like in your 20s, when you felt really good, what do you feel like perfect health is for you? When you recite this first part of this prayer, what do you believe that intelligence is? What obstructions in your body that you would like to get rid of? What are you focusing your attention on when you read this prayer? What do you feel like you need to get rid of? And restore you to perfect health. What is your health? What's your health that you would like to see today? Maybe you just like to be out of pain, out of situations within your life. Maybe it's more emotional health, spiritual health, physical health. It's where, where you're focusing your intent. And I would sincerely, I and this and all, I will do my part. I think that is the best part of the whole healing prayer. I will do my part. We, we as individuals, as healers, this organization can send you healing. Absentee, we can do all kinds of stuff. Distant healing. The question here is, you have to be able to do your part. You have to say, yeah, I believe this. I believe I can be healthy. You start doing those affirmations, those questions in your mind to clear the obstructions, the stuff within your vibration, and remind the body the obstructions that you've actually placed there. If you're having all kinds of stomach problems and all you do is drink Mountain Dew, big gulp from 7-Eleven, <laughs> and you do that three or four times, times a day and your system isn't really working well for you, maybe you might have to take the Mountain Dew out of your diet. <laughs> maybe. Maybe you might have to do something on your part to cause the health to happen. Maybe you'll have to do that. So you'll have to come to terms of how your health is working for you. It's all about you. It's not about what we as the healers or people here can do the healing. You have to personally be able to accept it. You have to say, yes, that is exactly the way I, that's what I want from it. You have to be able to accept it. You have to believe in where it's coming from, where the vibration is coming from. If you believe that you are your own healer and you're just going, the energy is all mine, <laughs> you might not get the healing that you need in your vibration because you're not accepting it from the higher consciousness, the guides, the people, the vibrations in the spirit world. So kind of look and see what you believe. Because the prayer that we read here, I asked the great unseen healing force, unseen healing force again great unseen healing force not like we have to see the great force that's actually causing the health to happen within our lives but we have to great ask this great unseen the present and absent ones who are in need of help and to bring them the perfect health the later part of this prayer this healing prayer actually does a lot with absentee healing distant healing sending energy sending vibrations to others to bring them the perfect health We've already asked for ourselves at the beginning part of this prayer. At towards the end of the prayer, we ask for others. We send energy out to others in absentee healing. So when you're doing the prayer for spiritual healing here in the organization, the first part is all about you. Where you will do your part. The second part is about others. Sending energy out to them sending energy out to others at a distance. And I put my trust in the power of God. At the end of the prayer, at the end of this prayer we do, you put your trust in the power of God. Not in a guide, not in your loved one, but in God, the infinite force, the infinite spirit. You put your trust in that. That everything is brought back to perfect balance within your life and others that you have prayed for. The children's prayer, I think, is kind of cool. We have a children's 
spiritless prayer for healing. It is, I ask God's healing power to make me whole and well. I know that I work with God through my thoughts and actions to make the healing happen. I ask God's healing power to heal other people near and far away. I trust God will answer this healing prayer. That is from the Children's Lyceum. That is from their prayer that they're cited in Children's Lyceums across the world. That is the Children's Lyceum prayer. Out of that children's lyceum book for the adults, part of this was actually a prayer called Backbone. It's actually written back in the 1900s, early 1900s. And the prayer goes, when you, are, when you see a fellow mortal without fixed or fearless views, hanging on the skirts of others, walking in their cast off shoes, bowing low to wealth and favor, with object uncovered head, ready to retract or waver, willing to be drove or led. Walk yourself with firmer bearing, throw your mortal shoulders back, show your spine less nerve and marrow, just a thing too many lack. When we do healing in our lives, we have to allow ourselves to think that we're not perfect, but we can be healthy. We can ask the great unseen healing force to bring that healing energy to us. But if we believe that we're sick, we believe that we're ill, we're not gonna, we're not gonna survive the week, things might happen because your thoughts have gone into that direction. You put your head down low, you, you, you've filtered into that vibration instead of allowing yourself to see higher ground. Whether you're sick and you're getting ready to go to the spirit world, your thoughts, your prayers, your situations can make it an easier journey to the spirit world as you leave this earth plan. It doesn't mean that everything your guides are going to give you from the spirit world is going to keep you here. Maybe your body or your vessel that you have in this lifetime is getting wore out. You're getting ready to go home. That means that the prayers, the healing, the vibration you bring in your life will be there to make the journey home more easier for you. So, so either way, whether you're asking for perfect health, you're asking for spirit to use it the way they feel they need to use it. You don't direct the healings. Oh my God, my big toe hurts. It's got to go there. Spirit will take that energy to wherever it's needed to fix that. To fix that situation. Maybe you have thoughts in your head that spirit is going to clear for you to allow you to heal the body. That's why we call it body, mind, spirit. Sure, we're going to heal body, mind, spirit. But where on that situation are we going to heal? Is it going to be your spirit? Is it going to be your mind? Is it going to be your body? What are we, where is spirit going to use the energy? But I always think when people read the prayer here on our Sunday service, they read it really quick, like, I ask great notes in here, blah, 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 blah. Instead of thinking about it when you read it, thinking about the prayer as you read the prayer. Mentally think about it when you asked about the great saying, healing force. Where, do you, where are you placing your faith? Where are you facing it? Same thing is with mind and body. Where? And what are you going to do to make the healing happen? What are you going to do? Are you going to be an open channel? Do you allow the healing to work with you? Do you accept the healing? I laugh when I always tell people I got my brother who's got disability. Every time I go see him, he doesn't let me touch him because he's afraid he'll lose his disability if I heal him. So, so he makes me stay away from him. <laughs> I tease him, I want to swallow, I put my hand out. I say, come here, come here, just come here, just come here for a minute. I'll just let me touch you for a minute. <laughs> but some people really want healing. They want a balance of their life. Then they want just what they have. They, they need the illness. They need what they have in their life. So some people you're not going to be able to heal. You're not going to be able to get them to where they need to be. You can send them comfort. You can send them connection, but you're not going to get them to where the perfect health, because what they need in their life is what they already have. 
They need that. They, they have connection. You're not changing that motion, that vibration within their life. So sometimes we have to just send as much as we can to them to get them to where they need to be. There are types of spiritual healing that we have and absent healing. It's where energy is set to somebody at a distance. The healer clears their mind, clears their mind. I usually either take a person's name. We have a healing list. We put your people sign their name on. We take the name and we focus our intent on the name and we send energy from a distance, absent healing. Did every Thursday morning here, we have absentee healing sent out to during our meditation circle. So healing is sent out to the names that are read aloud. Well, if you're sitting in your room, you either take a picture or you take a name and you focus your energy, focus the energy towards that individual, towards that. You have to clear your mind though, clear your mind of all thoughts. You can't sit there holding somebody's picture and go, well, you know, I probably have to go shopping today and I, uh, I got, should probably get up here now. It's sitting quietly thinking only about sending healing to that individual, absentee healing. And having the focus of the energy of what, you're not focusing in on one condition. You're focusing on the total body, body, mind, spirit. Not the one condition the person's going through. Not what they're going through. There's so many things that happen in people's lives that this isn't the cause of the illness. The cause of the illness is something else, which has caused something else to break down. So we send it to the whole body, mind and spirit, and allow the body to use it to where it's needed, not to where we focus our intent. So many times I watch people heal and they do kind of the, call it the razzmatazz, waving and knocking and once you touch the person's shoulders, once you have touched or made connection with the body, the healing has already been done. All the rest, all the movement, all the other things, touching people's feet, touching the dog. Once the shoulders have been touched and the intention has been set, the healing is done. The healing is done at that point. Sure, we can balance the energy, we can set the energy, but as you set your energy with the individual, the healing is done. The rest is just... So when you set the energy, if we believe, and I see that's where we get our egos and the vibration. Oh my God, I've got to do a little here and I've got to touch here and I've got to do this and I've got to do this and I've got to do that. It has nothing to do with the whole balance of healing. It's the first intention when you enter the person's auric field or you enter their vibration, the healing has taken place. It has. The reason we do a little bit longer healing in the back, you'd feel kind of shortchanged. If I only healed you for a minute and a half and the other people are getting a five, five minute healing, you'd wonder what was going on next door. <laughs> why, why, why were they getting more than I was? <laughs> So, but as the healing takes place as soon as the touch is applied. Intention. The rest is where you feel like ego, you've got to place your hands. You have to place your hands there. But it's through a ritual of what works for you. And I always tell people what works for you. What fits the vibration for the healer. What fits them. What fits the vibration for what the healer needs to do bring forth the energy from the spirit world. So you'll pick your little niche, your little vibration of what you do. But there's no reason to touch somebody in the front of the body. There's no reason for that. All your chakras, all your energy centers are in your back. There's no reason to touch anything in the front. There's no reason for it. You can affect every healing center, every healing modality, every situation from the back. You do not have to touch the front. There's this whole thing when I, when I did, uh, there was a medium who used to come out here from England. His name was Eamon Downing. I used to teach healing out here. He used to teach healing when he was here. And Eamon told me that 
as you put energy into the crown chakra, where you should start, and as you put energy into the crown chakra, you leave your hands in front of the eyes, far enough in front of the eyes, that when you pull the energy over the crown chakra, it seals the energy that you placed into the crown chakra within the body. Then you touch the shoulders. And the healing has been taking place. It is done. It's how they do it at the Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary, different sanctuaries in England. So the question here is, what works for you? That kind of fits me. I kind of like the way, it's like pulling out angel wings when you do that. So it's according to what you feel is best for you. But absentee healing starts with a picture, a name, a vibration of somebody, send them healing out to the individual. Healing without spirit intervention, magnetic healing. And that is that people have a lot of energy, a lot of magnetic energy, vibration of energy, um, that by touching somebody, by the energy from an individual affects you strongly. I used to have people come back here. Some of the older mediums come back here. They want to grab hold of me, hold, hold onto my hand just to collect some, collect the energy that I had. Collect it. So the question is, we would, we could have a lot of magnetic, magnetic healing abilities within our life. Magnetic. We're using the magnetic energy around us through our being, through our vibrations, what we have. But if you did all just nothing but magnetic healings in the back, you'd be exhausted. Because you're not dealing with spirit. You're using your physical, your psychic force within your being to affect the healing. You're not allowing spirit to do it. You're using your own energy. And then when you get done healing, a lot of people, you're exhausted. You're tired. You feel that's the same work that happens when you do mediumship. If you do mediumship more psychically than mediumistically, you're probably going to be tired. You're going to be exhausted once you finish doing all the readings. You'll be exhausted by working with spirit. You are using the energy from the spirit world, not your own. How to get assist in your own healing. You should start probably with a healing group. Start with a vibrational group in your life. What is, where is spirit leading you? Most healing that is done is not because the healer is back in the back of that church. Everybody here is a healer. Everybody here can heal. You have to believe that you are attracting the forces of spirit through your body to bring the healing to you. You have to believe that it is there. That's why you have to kind of get to the affirmation. So different things that's in your vibration. I am healthy. I am abundant. I am getting well, better and better each and every day. I am. And start doing these affirmations in your life. Sure, it might take a little while for you to clear out the cobwebs and all the debris that's there. But eventually, you'll be able to accept whatever you propel within your body. You will. You'll have, you'll accept it. You have to be able to accept the healing, whether you do it on yourself, self-healing. When I got taught Reiki, Reiki is, first part is self-healing of the healer. Healing me. I can't be an extremely powerful healer if I'm sick. If I'm back there coughing and can't stand up and you want to come to my store for a healing, you probably won't wander over there. <laughs> probably won't come to me because I am not in a good physical shape. I am not healthy enough to send you enough energy. I'm not healthy enough. I'm not having that connection. I haven't healed myself. I haven't worked with my own being. Now you expect me to put my hands on you and actually heal you. If I'm not wealthy, healthy, we always tell the healers, if you're sick, you're ill, do not come back and heal. Do not come back. Heal, heal yourself first and then come and do the healing. I have a strong belief in spiritualist healing in churches. I believe in our lives. I believe in the vibration that 
we need to have hands-on, hands-on healing in the church, hands-on. Trying to believe that. I know people don't want to touch. They don't want to touch the individual. But I strongly believe that people come to this organization. They come to a church service. And through the whole week, through the whole month, through the whole situation in their life, maybe they might never have anybody in their home. They come to church to get a healing. And at least somebody within the week, within the month, somebody will actually put their hands on their shoulder and make a connection to them. It's a connection. Sure, I could wave in your auric field and I could do all that. But the question is, the question is, I could do that, but it's not that physical touch, that physical vibration of touch. You can sit in your bed and do self-healing and do wave through your auric field, but it's still not as comfortable, as good as this, if you physically just touch yourself. Touch the physical vibration of touch works extremely well. And for many years here in the camp, we had physical touch, physical touch until somebody came in the organization and brought chronic healing, chronic healing into the camp. Then everybody decided they wouldn't need to touch anymore. Didn't need to touch anymore, got chronic healing now. And chronic is not through touch, it's through energy, balancing and clearing. Uh, so it wasn't through the thing of touch. People always explain to me when we do this, oh, I know where the York field is. I know where it is. No, you don't. You don't really know where the York field is. If you wave too much in the York field, you can not close chakras or move them, but you can affect them in a negative way. By keeping physical touch to the body, you do not affect the chakras in a negative way. You don't. And it's that whole balance. And I have a whole thing with that, of balancing of touch, that is physical touch. I don't care if you just put two fingers on somebody, keep the physical touch within the body. Wave all you want. Keep some kind of touch on the body. Even when you're healing yourself, keep a touch on your vibration. But we should all sit in our lives and sit in our connection in the vibration in our lives. I have to read something that my mother wrote many years ago, pulled it out of my stuff. But she wrote this many years ago when she taught something on healing many years ago. And it says, may the healer's healing hand rest upon me. May infinite spirit's life-giving power flow into every cell of my body and into the depths of my soul, cleansing, purifying, restoring me to wholeness and strength. For I call for the from to the four corners of the universe for light and health and love. From all the master healers, so that they do their work, I in turn will do mine, accepting the love that has been given. And so it is. My mother wrote that many, many years ago. She wrote that for healers. Send the healing force within the body. We are conduits of bringing forth spirit, bringing forth that spiritual energy within our lives. Absentee healing is not because you're doing absentee healing or distant healing to someone at a distance. You could sit in your home with your own name and send healing to yourself. You have to be able to accept it, though. You have to tell yourself, I can do that. I, hey, I can do that. But it's that clearing, that vibration, that energy. Not starting with a clean slate within your life. We all have things going on with us. I'm, I'm getting 70 now, so... <laughs> The body isn't as working as it used to when I was 20. <laughs> not, not the whole connection when I was 20, but I can keep myself as healthy as I can for where I am at this moment in my life. You might not be 20 anymore. You might not be this, oh my God, I got so much energy. But you affect your vibration at the stage of life you are now. Whatever's happened in your life at this moment, through the last years in your life, what do you want to see? What do you want to envision? That's what you should ask yourself. 
Because when we say that, I will do, I will do my part. The part is the major key. What is your part? Is your part to be healed? To hold on to something you've had before in your life? And, oh, my God, it's my mother had that. So oof, I'm going to have to go through it. You know, it's in the family tree. You know, I'm going to have to deal with that. Why? Why do you have to deal with it? It's when your mind, your thoughts, your vibrational thought goes to that vibration. There it is. There it is. I have a whole thing with Louise Hayes. She's a book on Heal Thyself. She also has uh, 101 positive thoughts on a recording. And it fills your house with 101 positive thoughts. Brings energy within your space. So play something in your personal space at home. Something that's uplifting. Clearing movement of energy, bringing positive energy into your vibration. Allow that just to play in your space. Play. It'll change the energy within the space. People walk in the space and go, oh my God, it feels so good in here. You haven't really done anything different. You just put some music on. You just put stuff on that actually is going to clear the space. By telling yourself, and that we, see, see, we can clear this whole space with music. Connection to higher senses of consciousness. We can do that. Might not affect you inwardly, though. See, when we talk about clearing the space, clearing the channel, clearing the vibration, doesn't mean we clear the whole space. We clear this space within us. The vibrational, vibrational space within us. That's what we're clearing. There's where the work starts. The work doesn't start outward. The work starts inward. Starts within the space that I am. And so it is. The healing takes place within you, whether through thoughts, encouragements. I love it when people say, Lewis, you don't look so good today. What happened? And I look right back at the person. I go, well, I looked really good until you walked up. I thought I looked good. The UK, <laughs> as long as we believe that we are healthy, I'm as healthy as I need to be at this point in my life. Could I be healthier? I'd like to be a little more. You know? I'd like to be 20 again, but it's probably not going to happen today. <laughs> but I'm as healthy as I need to be at this moment in my life because I focus the positive energy within my life. I focus it. Allow spirit to work through me. I don't call from just me. I'm a little bit different than some people. I just don't call from infinite spirit. I call from the four corners of the universe, like my mother used to do. From the four corners of the universe, all the master healers, all the teachers, all the instructors, all the master guides, all the angelic presence, everyone from the four corners of the universe to converge on my being. Converge. I always thought my mother used to teach that was if I need brain surgery, no sense to me collecting somebody in the spirit world is a, that's a foot doctor, a podiatrist. I need brain surgery. I don't need a foot doctor. I need something going on up here. So the question is, I want to track from the universe whoever I personally need for what's going on with me at this moment. Whatever they need to fix at this moment. You might not know what you need to fix. Maybe maybe one of your little caution lights are on <laughs> and you don't know why it's on. You just know there's a caution light on. You don't need to know why. All you need to know is to attract from the four corners of the universe the health, the balance within your life. The health and balance. I'm a good speaker for that. I spent a lot of my childhood in a wheelchair. I was supposed to be dead when I was 18. I'm still here. Think I'm supposed to be here, I think. <laughs> but I'm still here because I've changed my thoughts. I've changed conditions within my life to move it to a higher sense of consciousness. But allow yourself to be the, your channel for spirit.
your channel for health, yours. Take a moment in your meditations during the day just to speak your name out loud and high reverence and attract whatever into your being that you need for a few moments a day. Allow spirit to work with you, to send the energy from the four corners. Let's allow ourselves to do that. But healing is here in the back of the church is hands-on healing. So we have in the church, hands-on. Uh, what people do in their private practice, God bless. Back of the church, hands-on. And that's what we ask in this church, hands-on. The most spiritual churches are hands-on. Most of them are. Hands-on healing is to be that conduit that connects to your conduit to send you energy, to send you a connection from the individual that's giving the help, but that individual being the conduit to send you energy from the four corners of the universe. So remember, when you say the prayer, when you say the prayer, I will do my part. Or... I ask the great unseen healing force. Think about what you believe that is. Don't just read it and hope that somebody else in the spirit world knows what it is. Ask yourself, what does it mean to you? I could ask people here, what is unseen healing force? Or what, is, what does that mean to you? I ask the great unseen healing force. A lot of you would give me different answers. What the healing force is to you. What that end vibration is to you. You give me a different answer. Oh, I think it's angels, though. Oh, no, no, it's my guides, my healing guides. My guides that follow me there, that's who they are. It's God, you know, God is there. But if we believe in spiritualism that God is in everything. God is in this building, chairs, floor, in us, and everything. God is everywhere. God doesn't sit somewhere. My mother used to say, God does not sit on the stoop at a row house in New York. God is everywhere. So we have to realize that if we believe that we personally can do healing in our lives, we can do it ourselves. But it takes a moment. You have to take that moment to send yourself energy. Don't treat yourself so badly, people. Treat yourself with respect. You're still here. It's a reason why you're still here. Or spirit could have taken you over there. You could be having breakfast with family right now. You would be like, oh, hey, here you go. Huh? But you're still here. There's a reason why you're still here. It's a reason. The spirit, there's no sense of you being ill, sick, and decrepit with your head hanging low, like the, the backbone prayer I said, your head hanging low trying to hold on to everything else instead of yourself. Pulling from everything else. I tell people you should ask for health and balance when you're healthy. All oh, those I'm healthy, I don't need to ask. When you're healthy, when you're asking for health, when you're healthy, you're just asking. It's when you get sick, and you get ill, then you start begging for health then your mind starts playing tricks on you. You start listening to what the doctor just told you. You've got like a week or two to live. Everything's going to hell really quick. Then you start believing that. Then you're asking for help, but there's this whole thought process going on now of what everybody else has told you. While you're still healthy today, if you're healthy today, when you leave here today, ask for perfect health and the reason why not. Perfect health. Or the reason why not? Guides will show you. They're very, they're very repetitious in people's lives to show them what they need to do or change. You might not agree with your guides that you need to take something out of your diet, but your guides will show you what should happen to bring you back to pretty good health. But ask for health while you're still healthy. Don't wait till you're so sick you can't. Too sick you too can't. Once you put the one step, I tell people, once you step off the ground and you step onto the bus, it's kind of hard to get that foot back onto the ground when you're heading for the spirit world. 
Don't put the foot up on the up on the bus if you're not ready to go. Don't decide that hey, that's it. I'm done. Life's supposed to be very pleasant, people. Healing in the back of the church is for us to send you healing, but as for the spirit healers to send, be the conduit to send you healing. But the person who is the major event in the back is not the healer. It is you. Because if you accept the healing, then the work has taken place. If you haven't accepted the healing, we could send all the energy from every part of the universe and it wouldn't have any effect on you because you have not accepted it. So the healers, the people in the back are conduits. We're just standing there as conduits from the spirit world to send you healing. But the major event in the back is you. Because you're the one that's going to have to use it to wherever it is placed. Not me. The healers work back there because we're kind of kind of two set here thing here. When we heal somebody, we get healing too. So we get healing just by healing, by giving help, by being the conduit. Spirit works with us. Same thing with mediumship. We give readings. We get just as much out of the reading as you do because we have all the energy that propels itself back in our lives. So when you think about the healing prayer, think about what I've told you about the healing prayer. Just don't read it. Think about it when you say it. When you say the healing prayer, when I ask the great unseen healing force, what is the healing force that you see? To remove all obstructions from my mind and body, what is your obstructions in your life that you have at this moment in your life? What are they? Restore you to perfect health. What's your perfect health? What's your perfect health for you? Might not be my perfect health, but what's your perfect health for you? All sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. You have to be sincere, honest with spirit, and ask them for what you feel like you need, and you will do your part. You will clear, you will regroup, you will rebalance. Healing force the present and absent ones. When you sit here and you say this prayer, you're sending out energy to everybody present in this audience. And to absent ones, loved ones, people in the spirit world. Everybody you have a conscious connection to, you're sending it out. But when you say present and absent ones, you're sending healing to people here in this room. Present people, present. Great unseen fellow of help by that ever, the sin who are in need of help to restore them to perfect health. You're asking not for your perfect health for them but their perfect health for themselves. Whatever their perfect health is for them, you're asking for them. Then put your love and the power of God. God is in everything. So you're according your power into all the forces and the energy of the universe. So when you read that prayer, read it in a different vibration in your life. What does it mean to you? How does it connect to you? Allow yourself to be that Healer within your own being. Heal yourself. I used to do a, li a big study on manifestation, heal yourself. It used to be a big workshop I used to do. Heal thyself. Heal, heal yourself. I can't heal you. I can only send you energy. You have to, you have to open the package. You have to accept the gift. And you have to use it. You put it up on a shelf and leave it there. No one's going to know you actually got the gift of healing. So allow yourself to use the gift of healing within your own being. Know that every one of you here are a healer. You have enough healing within your own vibration to heal you. You might not want to touch people. People might make you crazy. You might not want to say, oh my God, I got to put my hands on them. And some people, you want to put your hands on them, but not in the correct healing way. <laughs> so, but, but heal yourself. Heal your own vibration. Heal your being. All right. I'll take some questions if people want to ask me something. Go ahead. You're such a good crowd. I love it. Do I have any questions about healing? Yeah, John. Not fully, uh, 
Yes, as I said, the person that you're sending, like I could send you all the healing in the world. I could send you from all four corners. I could set the arm. I set the armies of health upon you. If you can't accept it or don't want to accept it, it's not going to happen. You have to be able to accept it. As I said, ask for perfect health when you're healthy. Although that's being sacrilegious, I should, I shouldn't ask. Ooh, ooh, that's being selfish. No, it's not. You're perfectly healthy, ask for perfect health now, or the reason why not. Because right now you're asking for it. You're not begging for anything. You're asking for health. Ask for perfect health now. And then see where spirit has to tell, show you what you need to do to bring yourself back to perfect health. When you're ill and you're sick, then your mind plays tricks on you. You're listening to everything else but your higher self. And you're allowing that to run your health vibration within your life. Don't allow your mind, your vibration to run your health vibration. Run it from a higher sense of consciousness. Ask for perfect health now while you're healthy. And if you get sick and you have to have health, ask for health, but ask from a higher sense of consciousness. Don't listen to what people are telling you. So I said, people walk up and you say, oh, you look so bad today, what happened? What truck hit you? Did you get the number? I look just fine to you, bro, bub. <laughs> look just fine to you got here. Set your motion in motion because you are perfect for who you are. Perfect. You might not think you're perfect, but you are. In God's eyes, you are perfect. You are a perfect creation of the God source. So allow yourself to believe that. Not everybody might think you're perfect. Not everybody thinks Lou's perfect. But I think I am. That's all that counts. That's all that matters. I think I am. So I don't have to worry about it. As long as I know I am, I have to just believe that I am. And then that energy will affect others to believe that I am too. So that'd be awesome. Yes. You're working on your seven, you're working on your astral body. Illnesses to enter your body take about seven, have to go through about seven layers through your body to get to you. The illnesses start out here first. They're not here, they start here. They venture into your body. So while you're healthy, there is something going on out here. You're clearing the astral body, you're clearing the physical body, you're clearing all this stuff. And if there is something here, that's coming towards you, you can fend it off. I think we're done. Huh? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. 